What, what are some steps that people can take to, to begin that process of, of growth and of change and, and uh, begin to become more mature? Not, not that they ever yeah. fully mature, right. Uh, you know, right, right here while we're on earth, but um, what are some steps that they can take to begin that process? Well, you can even speak into this too, because Zach, Zach was a part of our, uh, over our groups for qu- quite a few yeah. years at Journey. Uh, so I'll let him even speak into that. But we, we, we tell people here, as they continue to grow in their faith, um, again, this is not something you're meant to do alone. So, mm-hmm. you know, you can approach this from any way you feel uh, fits you best. Some people like that mentoring right. uh, relationship. So they, choose, they can have one person that they can um, uh, begin to talk to and right. go through maybe some material yeah. uh, with some early discipleship material that teaches me how to pray and teach me how to read the Bible. And yeah. you, know, you walk through that with one person. Uh, many times, and especially in our, our world, especially as Journey, we have two opportunities. One is to serve on teams yep. um, because teams themselves give a, a sense of community. It's not like a life group community or a group community, but it's more of a uh, working together. I find yeah. men enjoy this the most right. because men enjoy, um, they don't want to sit in a circle and talk about their feelings, but they'd rather like go park cars and <laughs> yeah, go work serve together. and go yeah, work. Yeah. They want to be shoulder to shoulder, but there's still something about being shoulder to shoulder with brothers and sisters in Christ serving that yeah. gives you a sense of being able to grow as you serve. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, you know, one is groups. And you can speak a little bit to this. Yeah. Groups is a big deal for us because we feel like, you know, groups is a, a primary yeah. place where growth can happen. So yeah. give a little bit on groups. Yeah, I mean, in, gr- in groups, you know, that, that in most of my life, whether it's a struggle that I'm going through or anything like that, when I think back over my time, you know, here at Journey, most of those times where I've had the, the toughest times to get through it, those, yeah. those speed humps, as I call them, on the growth yeah. on the growth yeah. path, you know, yeah. where sometimes it's hard to creep over them. Um, it, the group that I surrounded myself with, the life group, yeah. you know, was was one of the places that really helped me get through those things. Yep. Uh, you know, whether it was a hard situation in my life, you know, whether, you know, whatever it may be, uh, or just things I was struggling with, it gave me a safe place to to talk about those things, to express those things, to pray for those things, and to get insight from other people who have even been through similar oh, yeah. situations. And oh, so yeah. That's the beauty of a group A group context is that you you, you actually get the realization that, hey, I'm, I'm actually not in this alone. You know, they, they've been through something maybe not identical but very similar, right. and uh, here's what helped them, and, and that may help you get through it. So you groups, know, groups are great in that I always, I always felt, too, like you don't want to you don't, you don't always learn the hard way. Right. Right? So you don't always want to learn the hard way. So... I look at it and go, you know, sometimes I'm in, when I'm in group settings, somebody's going through something right. that I, not only can I benefit by what they're going through and what they're learning, but it may be an angle by which I'm able to speak into that exactly. and pray for them. Absolutely. And I'm actually learning with them, even though I'm not currently going through right. it. So there is an aspect of that that, again, again, we did not create this. This is what yeah. we feel like God created in the context of community uh, the way in which, even when he said, when you bind and loose scripture, right. which was the case of, of uh, yeah. rabbis, when you bind and loose scripture, you did it within the context of the followers right. of the community that you're with. So it wasn't even you dividing scripture alone yeah. and coming up with some whack theories. You actually do that with your people yeah. so you can see what God might actually be saying. So awesome. yeah, I'm with you, man. Yeah. So I would say if you, you know, take those steps, and those are the steps that I would encourage you on first. Uh, and again, find the ones that fit you best. Um, as a church, we'd love to help you take those steps. I'm meeting with a guy right now who does not come to church. He's a, uh, he has uh, struggles with OCD and other things yeah. like just, you know, it struggles to come into big groups like this. Right. Um, and yet my encouragement to him is every time we meet is like, dude, you're not supposed to be doing this alone. Like, I'm glad he comes and talks with me and we we're you know, he's got friends, but like, yeah. like your first step doesn't even need to be coming to church. It needs yeah, to be just... in a context right. of Christ centered relationships that help you, you know, help you grow. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, way to kick us off. Thanks, man. Looking forward to part two next yeah, week. Yeah, part two is going to so be good. it's going to be great. Hope to see you guys here, or feel free to check us out on Facebook Live. All right? Yep. See Thanks, you guys, guys next week.